Hey everyone, welcome back to Desktop Invention. We've got a lot of news to cover this week, so let's get into it. So we've got Bamboo Lab finally releasing their new H2D printer. We've got Anycubic making a really awesome foldable concept. A US-based manufacturer, Fusion 3, that we've got to talk about. And MIT has maybe made some breakthrough in printable electronics that can really change the game of 3D printing and design. So with that being said, let's jump right in. All right, so first up, after all the rumors we've been hearing over the last few weeks, Bamboo Lab just announced their new H2D printer, and most of the rumors we've heard are true. This thing is wild. It's not just a 3D printer, it's a printer plus a whole bunch of other functions that it can do besides printing. It's got a swappable laser head for engraving and cutting, it's got a pen plotter for drawing or filling in colors, and it even has a blade cutter that can cut designs out of vinyl, paper, and leather. And on top of it, this thing's got a bunch of new sensors, a bunch of new functions, and a whole bunch of stuff that we have to dive into. So one thing that's going to be really nice is this has dual nozzle 3D printing, which can finally help speed up some of our multicolor 3D printing, which takes a long time today to switch between colors. But it's just got two nozzles, so I think it'll do two colors a lot faster than normal. But when we get to three and four colors, I'm not sure if it can still be uh, changing the filament back to the AMS system in the background while the second nozzle is printing. That'd be interesting to see how much it can speed up on multiple, more than two color prints. Another cool feature, it's got a built-in filament dryer in its new upgraded AMS system. So the system looks like it has four slots plus one, and I'm not sure yet if it's just the one slot that has the, the filament dryer or all five can do filament drying. If you know something more on that, maybe leave it in the comments down below. So it's got an upgraded camera system with four cameras in the bay. So if you're doing laser engraving on a, a 3D object that has a curved surface, these cameras can help make a map of that curved surface so it can accurately laser print onto something like a, a piece of leather or jacket that's maybe not perfectly flat. On top of that, it's also got more smart features implemented. Like with these four cameras, it's going to do pre-checks before it starts printing to make sure no tools were left in the bed, there's no uh, garbage in the bed, and other things like that. So for the laser engraving system, they've got two options, a 10 watt and a 40 watt laser, with the 40 watt laser being quite a bit more expensive, but gives more options of how deep and what type of materials it can engrave into. And with that, they've got an optional air purifying system, which is basically a giant box, almost the size of the 3D printer, that sits behind the printer that can help with the fumes that are made when you're laser engraving. So as far as the pen plotter, this one's a bit of a head scratcher for me. We've seen this in the 3D printing community for years. You can 3D print a little bracket to put on your printing head. So you can put a pen or a marker in there and you can successfully turn your 3D printer into a 2D printer. Um, maybe there's some specific applications where this is useful, but this one's a bit strange to me. I think it's another one of those uh, check the box or I can do this too type of things. And then the blade cutter, I think that could be pretty cool for people making custom crafts, custom cards, or other creative, uh, creative items that you want to cut out of a 2D material. That has more merit than uh, the 3D printer to a 2D printer. Oh, and did I mention it's got a bigger printing bay, 350 by 320 by 325 millimeters. So it's going to compete with that larger Creality printer in this space. So this is now adding a really powerful printer to Bamboo Lab's already powerful arsenal of printers with more and more capabilities that it can do. So this thing's made for makers, educators, and creators that really want one tool that can do a bunch of different functions. With its sleek build, fast printing, and integrated multi-modularity, it can easily become the go-to machine for hobbyists who want to do more than just printing. That being said, it's not in the price range of your starter printer for your average user. It's starting out at $1,900 with no AMS system involved, and then it goes all the way up to $3,500 for the fully loaded decked out printer with the AMS and the more powerful laser option. All right, next up, let's talk about something you probably haven't seen before, a foldable 3D printer. And not just any foldable 3D printer, Anycubic just won the IF Design Award for their beautiful designed ultra slim collapsible printer. This thing is gorgeous. When it's completely folded up, it's only 75 millimeters tall or about three inches. When it's unfolded, it has this movable robot arm that can print objects up to 460 millimeters tall. So when I was a kid, this is probably how I would have pictured 3D printers is a fully movable robot arm that is just printing a part just like you would with your hand. Honestly, with this type of system with a movable arm with so many joints, it's probably gonna struggle with precision and tolerance um, in that 3D printing head. 
but maybe this is something they could overcome by putting some datum points or stickers on the bed and then some extra cameras to help position it, the 3D printing head in relation to the part. Now, will this become the new standard form factor of 3D printing? Probably not, but that's not the point. Innovations like this push the boundaries and really bring in new concepts and ideas into the field. And who knows, maybe by the second or third generation of this printer, it could be a really capable, awesome printer that really surprises us. So while this form factor is really cool and awesome looking, it's answering a problem that I'm not sure other people are having. What do you think? Do you need a portable 3D printer that you can just pack up and take on the go? Let me know in the comments down below. While everyone's buzzing about the new Bamboo Labs printer, let's talk about something a little different. Fusion 3's F200 printer. This is a US made 3D printer that's specifically aimed at commercial users, think schools, shops, and small manufacturing setups, and it's reasonably priced. And did I mention it's made in the USA? So what makes this printer stand out? Well, it prints at speeds as fast as the Bamboo Labs. It's got full linear rails all the way around. It's got a full metal, fully sealed enclosure, airtight. So it's got fumeless printing with HEPA filters, so no smell is detectable when you're printing ABS. This would be nice. So it's got better material support for high temperature printing, such as ABS without extreme warpage, which I struggle with on the Bamboo Labs today, and enterprise level reliability. So I wanted to give this company a shout out, not only because it's a fully capable and competitive 3D printer, but because it's fully built and supported in the USA, which can be a huge deal for organizations that need local service and compliance. And honestly, not a lot of people have heard about this brand before. So if you're running a business or a print farm, this machine might be a serious alternative to the Bamboo X1E or similar, especially if you want reliability, long-term support, and high performance 3D printer supporting many material options. All right, and finally, onto the super futuristic stuff. MIT researchers just made a major leap forward with fully 3D printed electronics. So using a new technique, they're able to integrate wires, traces, and semiconductors directly into 3D prints. That's right, no more flat PCBs required. This could really open the door to smart mechanical structures with circuits built inside of the structure, custom shaped electronics, not just square PC boards anymore, and even fully integrated robotics without needing extra wiring. So imagine printing a drone frame where all the wiring is already 3D printed in the drone frame. And in fact, one of MIT's upcoming future goals is to fully 3D print a working electromagnetic motor. Um, they think they have all the technologies able to do it. They've just got to get the design down and really make the first attempt at a fully 3D printed working electric motor. That would be game changing because then you could have your drone frame with the wiring and the motors inside. Then you might just have to pop in a speed controller and a battery and you're off to the races. Maybe, maybe someday. So we're still in the early stages and it's not ready for showtime yet, but this would really break the mold in the electromechanics industry of not having to design things around a square circuit board. If you could really just implement or integrate the circuits into the structure, I think it would really change uh, how our products look and how we would go about designing future products. So I look forward to seeing more of this in the next five to 10 years. All right, so being it's the end of the month, I thought we'd try something a little different and take a dive into Amazon's uh, top selling 3D printers of this month and see what's hot and what's not over there. So let's look at this list I put together of Amazon's top 20 3D printers from March. Um, so I've got them ranked one through 20. This is the ranking that comes from Amazon. Then I've got the printer, printer name in the second column there and then the quantity that it said it was selling in the last 30 days from Amazon, and then the price as reference in the last column there. And you'll notice I added a number 21 here, which is the Creality Ender 3, because while it didn't show up in Amazon's top 20 list, it was having a lot more monthly sales than most of the printers in the top 20 list. So I thought it should rightfully be added here. So next up, I just took a stab at cleaning up the list. I got rid of the duplicates and then combined the, the quantities such as the Flash Forge 5M and the Ender 3 SE. So now we can see this list is down to the top 14 3D printers. And then I sorted them in terms of uh, quantity sold in the last month. We can see the top three brands here just dominating the list are Flash Forge, Creality, and Elegoo. So it's crazy to see that Flash Forge has so many sales on Amazon and as I mentioned in the last video, they're about to release their AD5X printer to the US market. So that might even boost their sales even more. And then obviously we've got Creality in there is a huge name with their Ender 3 and Ender 3 SE series and the Creality uh, K1C. 
And then Elegoo is also one of the top brands here and they focus on the resin printers. So they've got several resin printers in the top, top printers here, the Mars 5, Saturn 4, and Neptune 4. And then Bamboo Labs has only got one printer in this list, but honestly, I don't think they sell very many printers on Amazon. Most of their printers come directly from their website. And then a few honorable mentions. Anycubic's got a couple in here with a 10K resin, the Cobra S1, and the Photon Mono M7. And then Frozen, I'd never heard of this brand before, but they made it into the top 20 list here. And then the Sovol SV06 Plus. This one didn't have enough sales reported in the last 30 days, so it's listed as NA. And then finally, I further broke this list down to the top 3D printed brands from the last month. And here we see Flashforge and Creality right at the top. And then it's interesting, I tried to add the total value of the recent monthly sales, but this for sure is not accurate, but it gives a, a relative sense of scale here. So Flashforge and Creality both uh, breaking the $1 million mark. And then Elegoo quite a bit uh, far behind in third place with 284,000. Anycubic just over 100,000. And then Bamboo, Frozen, Sovol uh, less than 100,000. So that's it for the breakdown of the top 20 3D printers from Amazon this month. Hopefully this was helpful or useful to you. I'll put some links to those printers down in the description below. Full disclosure, I will use an affiliate link there. So if you do buy some, I will get a small kickback. Okay, so now let's go take a look at the printables and Thingiverse prints of the week. Okay, so let's talk about our printables print of the week. And no, it is not this Orbiter V2 extruder. It is actually this uh, wing nut bit tool. So you can fit a hex bit tool into this uh, wing nut tool here. I have some nice wings here to grab it. This is made by Printmaker. So we're just going to use the Orbiter V2 just to demonstrate it. So you can uh, definitely loosen and tighten a bolt as needed. With it being a wing nut tool, it is a little bit less uh, user friendly. It kind of flops around as you're, you're turning it here. So that brings us into the second printables print of the week, also by Printmaker. This one is called the Ergo Bit Tool. So this one has a nice spinning end here that just snaps in after you print out these two pieces. And this does have a knurled handle on it, so you get a nice firm grip. So now this one is much more user friendly. So as I can hold this blue stationary, stationary part on the back of my hand, I can really easily spin things out, uh, spin nuts and bolts out very, very fast, just like that. So I highly recommend uh, this tool if you don't have a screwdriver like this already. Okay, now onto the Thingiverse print of the week. This is called a life health counter. So it's often used in uh, role-playing games where you need to count or keep track of light points. And this one's got five total pieces printed out, so we're just going to assemble it real quick. So you have a big uh, gear here that's going to fit um, in the big cutout here that can easily accommodate it. And then you have two wheel gears. And these can go in um, in either direction. This piece is symmetrical, so there's no way to assemble it wrong. Just get your uh, number pieces towards uh, facing out the window there. Snap both of those into place. And then to bring this, these two together, it's a little bit tricky, but you'll want to make sure the small gear goes into this larger gear here, and you're just going to assemble them together. So now what this does is it's a counter. So we can see, we can count from 99 back to zero. One, two, three, four, all the way up, 10. So this will go zero to 99, and it's uh, just really fun to play with. It's a really cool mechanical print. Um, snaps together, stays together with a friction fit. So this is a nice, um, wonderful design. This is by Anton Acid. So I think this is really awesome, and definitely a, a fidget I'm going to play with just for fun at the desk. Highly recommend this as well. The Thingiverse Print of the Week. All right, so now a bonus print of the week. So I did not print this, but I connected with a company from the TCT Asia Maker Fair there, and they were selling ergonomic uh, keyboard and mouse uh, cushions. So this is uh, when you have a mouse here, it's a cushion pad for your wrist. And then I've got a big old, big one here for a keyboard as well. So this is uh, extremely high quality and it's got a, a lattice structure in there that's really uh, flexible and soft. Um, when I saw this at the show and tried it out, I said, ah, I gotta have one of these. So I uh, talked with a guy and bargained with him and he got me 
two sets here. Got a white one and a blue one. The white will probably get a little dirty over time, but got both these sets for $30. So I'm really happy with these prints. I love to get a 3D print in my life that I will use every day and not, uh, not compromise just to use a 3D printed part. There we go. Those are the bonus prints of the week. So let me know if you think this is uh, cool and interesting and if you would use one of these at home. All right, so that's what's happening in 3D printing this week. We've got the Bamboo Labs, the Anycubic, the Fusion 3, and uh, MIT and trying to rewire the game. So which story blew your mind the most? Drop a comment below and let's talk about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more weekly updates, I'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions. Just look how soft that is. It is really comfortable.